Hey there, Golfs and Golfettes. Tom Segudo here, PGA member and founder of Segudo Golf. Happy Saturday to you all. Beautiful 80 degrees here in Myrtle Beach. So sending you some warm weather wherever you may be watching this YouTube episode. And I figured I'd start this episode and share with you my golfing story and how I ended up teaching you what I am teaching on YouTube today. Uh, it was quite a process. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to walk you through what was going through my mind at this time, and then now you know what's in my mind because you watch my episodes. But at this time, I'm about 18, 19 years old at Coastal Carolina University back in 2012, 2013, so not too long ago. Aspiring PGA professional, and I'm trying to pass my playing ability test. You can see this swing right here. That's not going to get it done. That's a pretty standard swing among a lot of people on the range that I see today. The lifting of the arm, shifting of the weight, the dropping of the club, or just the straight up chopping that I'm doing here. And I was desperate for answers. So this swing is me in a situation where I'm incredibly desperate to save my game, to pass my playing test, going through thousands of YouTube tips, and picking up every Golf Digest article I could find and trying everything. Except, in the back of my mind, right here, there was a little kernel, somewhere in here, that said, any tip is a good tip, except stack and tilt. We will never go into stack and tilt or anything related to stack and tilt because they're crazy. The golf media says it's a reverse pivot. Um, you release your hand. You you have you don't release your hands as much. You shift. You don't shift your weight. You keep your weight on your front side. You take the club inside. Oh heavens! All these things in your head, right here. That little kernel was saying never stack and tilt. Well, let's see how well that worked out for me because I got to the point where I was just about to quit, and this was that point. So let's go through this swing, and you'll see why. Just keep that in mind that at this time in my life, I was a never stack and tilter. I was just like most of you who were skeptical or just against it. So whenever you throw comments and sling crap at me for doing this, it doesn't affect me because I know exactly what's going through your head. Um, let's look at the shaft plane here and my shoulders. So you know what I talk about a lot is turning the shoulders 90 degrees to your spine. So there's my spine. And there's the shaft plane of the club, standard lines. We always see these lines. Right off the ball, you can see the level turn. And when I talk about level turn, this is what I mean. Not perfectly level, but it's coming out of your posture, out of your inclination to the ball. And then look at this, look at the club. It goes way up high. So everything I say not to do is what I'm doing. And it doesn't, so the stuff right here just doesn't work. Here's why. All right, club is high, shoulders are level. So right away, relationship to the ball, gone, club is high. What goes up, yes, must come down. So the club's lifted up, and then it's gonna go right back down into the ground, right here. That's not a very powerful swing because the club going straight down to the ground, or steep as it's referred to a lot of times, steeper, the club should be approaching, not from there, but from here. That gives you an idea of how far off I'm at at this point. I need all superhuman hand-eye coordination to make this work, which I had at the time. I don't know how I hit the ball from here. Club's going straight down into the ground. And what, in this blue line, it's just falling. The club, the club, at this point, it's got nowhere to go. So it's just going to fall down, straight down to the ground. Like all the power is gone. Okay. There's no direct power to the ball because I'm not swinging on a circle anymore. I'm lifting my arms. I'm chopping the club down. So just envision all of the, you're taking a pickaxe to the ground. That's where all your power is going. Instead of going around my body and a back around, I'm going up and down, up and down. Also, check this out. High arms, really, really flexed right leg. And, you know, this is how my backswing. Look at that flexed right leg. And just a pre to that, 
I had an S posture because I was told it gives you more power. See, I was just told that and I did it anyway, but it caused back pain because at 18 I was having pain there in my lower back and that wasn't going to survive very long. I almost destroyed my back if I would keep doing this. So that's an uncomfortable position. You actually see a little bit like my spine. I think my spine is somewhat like that, contorted. Right leg is like this. It's not a natural body position. It's not free flowing and I'm chopping down on the ball. Isn't that, we're all familiar with this type of swing. I mean, I think there's a lot of you out there who did the same moves. In 1200 golf lessons I've done, I've seen about 95% making the same move like this, steep like this. The club, shaft, and, and why, why is it steep? Well, you should take the club back on the shaft plane. Your arm should be on the shoulder line at the top, and I have neither. <laughs> and then on the downswing, you should strive to match this plane as much as possible. So. I don't. <laughs> Look how far away that is from the at, from where I need to be. That's a couple feet. That's a trouble position. So that's my golfing story. I hit rock bottom here at this point in my golfing life. Let's move into the new part of my golfing life. I'll show you in a video today. This will end with a video. Not just this, but like an actual video of me explaining things. I'll show you what we ended up doing. I don't have a video from that fateful first lesson. But I do have this to show you. First lesson, I'm on internship at a private club in South Carolina, and the assistant pro, now head pro, I wanted to get a lesson from him because I was desperate for help. So we go out in the range, and he says, all right, I want you to put 55% of your weight on your left side here, 45 on your right. Now keep in mind, I'm still a never stack and tilter at this point. So I'm like, uh, I don't like that at all in my head. So I'm saying, okay, I'll pretend to do it. Because I know some of you, you ever do a lesson where you pretend to do what someone tells you to do? Like you got your buddy who's a 30 handicapper who shoots in the hundreds teaching you and t telling you how you can shoot under 60. But you don't take his advice because he's never shot anywhere near par in his life. So, you know, that kind of thing. You just pretend to do what he's saying because it's awkward. So anyways, he says, put 55% of your weight on your left leg and keep it there throughout the swing. Then he says, okay, now that you got that weight in the setup, I want you to take the club inside. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Inside, I've done, I'm done with the whole inside takeaway thing. I've spent my whole life trying to get rid of an inside takeaway. And he's like, it's not the inside where you're rolling your hands type thing. Because in the traditional way, you're sometimes rolling the face open and lifting the arm. So there's some rolling off of the ball. But here in this swing, we're looking at taking the club around our body, which means it's going lower. It's not going up. It's not taking a path up like that. It's going around our body. We're accessing rotational power, not up and down. Golf's a rotational game. Golf is a circle. Golf swing is a circle. So he has me taking the club around my body. And by the way, he puts a club shaft like right here and he's holding it. So his hand's here, he's holding the club shaft. You know, just imagine stick figure holding the club shaft right there. <laughs> and he says, swing under the club shaft. I'm like, okay, this is really weird. So I swing and it feel, my, the swing feels like it's, it's about this far right here. It feels about hip high. But my goodness was the ball taken off. It was low, and he, he'd hold it there, then he'd take it away on the downswing. So I'd take the club low and around, and then the ball would just take off. I was picking up 20 yards, and it was a nice little push draw, what you see on TV, those nice little baby draws. I couldn't believe it. And then he says, okay, you've got your weight forward. You're taking the hands around, or the hands are in. Now I want you to turn your shoulder down a little bit and allow that right leg to straighten. So some minor adjustments. And the ball, then the compression started coming in because the shoulder going down established a relationship to the ball. So say bye to the stick figure. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what started happening. Shaft plane, shoulder line. So we're turning our shoulders 90 degrees to our spine. The club's going in. Shoulder's working down off the ball. It's still going down and he's turning his shoulders. At the top, the lead arm is on 
the shoulder line, you know, right there, matching the angle of the shoulders. That is a great checkpoint. The hands are behind the shoulder. So that tells you you're not lifting the arms, you're going around your body. And there's a pivot right here, there's space right here in between the legs. So boom, three powerful positions that I've been trying to explain to you all, but he was explaining this to me in my first lesson. This is lesson one, and I was a stack and tilt hater until this lesson. I had this lesson, it changed my life. Just like some of you who have commented and said you started doing these things and they changed, it's, it's, it's unbelievable for you. Like a gentleman um, yesterday commented, his lowest round ever was an 85 and he did that a while ago, but he usually shoots like 88 to 99 and he just shot an 82 after watching one video, I think it was. So fantastic job. He's going to be breaking 80. A little change like this. So he, we make this change in the lesson. And then I work on it for two weeks. And I went from shooting 94 on this tough track, 7,200 yards, 7,400 yards in their type golf course. I was playing from the white tees shooting 94. Then in two weeks' time, I was playing from the tips, and I shot a 74. So I was 94 from the white tees on the same course and then a 74 from the tips in two weeks. Could you, could you think of how happy I was? Which this led to me passing my playing ability test. Go figure. Golfers and golfettes, let me just explain this little tidbit to you. One more thing and then I'll explain it. It's really important. Because I hope this video resonates well. Um, I'm share, and sharing my experience, what you can expect to experience by just changing your ways. We did some other lessons where we talked about hitting the ball in the same spot every time. It is possible to be that consistent. The tour pros do it. They're really good. Yes, they practice a lot, but there are some things that are constants. So here's the weight forward. This is Charlie Wee. He's a great model for this swing. He is one of the biggest models for the stack and tilt swing. Fantastic ball striker. Weight is forward, 55-45. And when he turns his shoulders... They're going to stay inside of this shoulder circle. Now, this shoulder circle represents the shoulder center. I'm going to keep this as simple as I can. But if you turn your shoulders in a circle, the club is just an extension of that shoulder turn. So if you keep the left arm straight and you turn your shoulders in a circle, you're usually going to hit the same spot every time. It's going to return there every time. You're not shifting or swaying. Okay? So back to the shoulder circle center. If I turn my shoulders in a circle and turn that shoulder down and keep my weight where it is, there's only one spot I can hit the ball. It's right there every time. Mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes. Say it with me. Mashed potatoes. Boom. Shoulders are still in the circle. The weight is forward. And the weight ends up being more forward. It's a power move. All of a sudden, this weight you've got forward you leverage that weight, you push off of the weight, and it automatically starts the downswing. Look at this. It's automatic. This swing is mostly automated. And I think one of the tour players, I think it was Charlie Wade who said this, but he could take a couple weeks off and do whatever he wanted, not play golf, and he'd come back and he'd be right where he left off. And that's what was really appealing to me in this swing because I knew that if I took some time off to just not play golf for a little while, I'd be right back where I started. It wasn't like, I'm going to lose my swing if I don't keep it up. No, that never happens. You do these things and it works all the time. You just do these things. Like, if I'm having a, if I'm having a problem today, I just take one look at my swing on a video camera and I say, oh, I just need to turn my shoulder down a little bit. Boom, done. I just need to take the club in a little bit more. Boom, done. I need to have my weight a little bit more forward because I may have shifted a little bit. Boom, done. It's simple. And that's how you can be with your swing. So my last really important tidbit here for you golfers and golfettes. You are only as good as the information you have access to. And in the golf world today, as I've just told you with this story, you've only got access to the information that produces this.
you've only got access to this information. It's getting better, but based on the 1,200 lessons that I've done, and I've seen 90 to 95% of people swinging this way, all those people are people like you, going out, going to YouTube, Golf Digest, going to golf schools, and they're coming to me like this. So don't try and tell me that there's nothing wrong with instruction. Because if I'm seeing this, and they're struggling, and some people come to me with back pain, and I can turn that into something that makes someone have a lot more fun and hit the ball a lot further and feel crisp contact for the first time, real crisp contact, then make the switch because this isn't working. It's not. I get really into this because I was the theoretical poster child of this whole golf instruction thing, this whole traditional instruction, I embody this in my swing because I did everything to a T. I'm one of those guys who picks it up and does it exactly as it says. So shift my weight? Sure, I'll shift my weight. Keep the leg flexed? I'll keep my leg flexed. Turn my shoulders parallel to, uh, or, you know, try and maintain your posture. My shoulders level out. Get my arms a little higher. Release the club. Turn your hips. All these things are very vague. We don't have to deal with this anymore. I want the best for the golfing public, and when the handicap is still up in the upper 90s and 100s as the average score, which I know most golfers are miserable because they're shooting that score, it, golf can't be that fun. And that's why the game is suffering right now. And that's why the growth of golf is stagnated. It's too hard. It's not too hard. You've got the wrong information. So if you change your information, you change your swing. You change your information from what this is, this hack right here, me, hacking at the ball. You just change your information, change the program in the computer to this. Which, doesn't, which takes one lesson, one to two lessons, for me at least. You change the program, and it doesn't take a lot of work, and you start playing your best golf. It's that simple. You're only as good as the information you have access to. So to change this for everybody and make everybody have better golf swing, the information has got to shift. And it's amazing with all the technology and club technology, swing analysis technology, all of that stuff we have today, we're still working off of an old, outdated swing platform that's not quite based on physics and geometry. It's based on whatever we guess. Really, it's like guessing half the time. Oh, maybe you need to do this. Now, this stuff, this stuff right here I'm showing you has a definite cause and effect. So whatever you do in here, we know the effect of taking the hands in. You know that it's going to cause you to have more power potential because you're taking the club around your body instead of lifting the arms up, which causes you to chop. Like, there's definite causes and effects. I'd much rather work with a system that has this relationship instead of having to go to many different instructors and figure out, okay, well, I like this instructor because I get better with this one, but this one doesn't get me better. Instead of just trying to figure that out and cut through the clutter, just change the program. So golfers and golfettes, this is a, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to put a video out today as well showing you how you can practice this stuff. Check out my All Access membership on the link in the description below. And hopefully we keep getting these nice 80 degree days. I know we're all socially distancing right now, but it's a perfect time to make a switch in your computer program to something that is consistent and is proven to work because in the 1200 lessons that I've seen people doing these same old mistakes that I'm showing you in the same old lifting arm, shifting your weight, steep downswing, the same old stuff, it's time to make a change. I've taken that and changed all of those students into what you're seeing here and it changes their golfing lives forever. There's a reason why this material has like a 99% success rate. The 1% is just the student putting in the effort. And, you know, the 1% is really the student putting in the right effort. If you get the right material and right information and you work it properly, 
then boom, you're good to go. So have a fantastic day.